in Ali's last entry from this date in 1874. I believe this is October 25th, right? Yes, yes. She mentions having read Julia Cavanaugh's book, Grace Lee, which I believe was from the 1860s, 1855. So at that time, it would have been about a 20-year-old book. Cavanaugh was an Irish writer who expatriated to France with her nearly blind mother, who she cared for for the rest of her life, having lived shorter than her mother, actually, because she died after a fall when she was, what, 53? She died and during a fall. They don't really explain the fall, but I guess it doesn't matter. She seems to have been more popular in Europe than in America, though she did make it to some of the the monthlies where they probably serialized a few of her works. But yeah, she had a, quite a list of books in her bibliography. She was known to Dickens, and apparently she had a she went to talk to. She demanded to speak to. Charlotte Bronte, who described her as a little, almost dwarfish figure, to which even I had to look down, Bronte being less than five feet tall, not deformed, that is, not hunchbacked, but long-armed and with a large head, at first sight, a straight face. But I've tracked down a free copy of the book, And we'll read a chapter or two from it. Uh, maybe not a chapter, a page or two, I should say. Grace Lee, chapter one. Maybe I should turn off this camera and flash. The snow fell fast, soft, white, and noiseless. It was borne past the parlor window. A gray sky, a white, hilly horizon bounded the outward prospect. Within all was touched with the red firelight. Tables, chairs, cabinet, and mirror gave back the same warm and burning glow. A gray-haired old man with a harsh, sarcastic face sat writing by the window. A middle-aged, good-tempered-looking woman sewed by the fireside. Further on in the background and half-gloom of the room, a slender, dark-haired, and dark-eyed girl of 17. Maybe this is why she was reading it. A slender, dark-haired, and dark-eyed girl of 17. Does Allie have dark eyes? I guess it's hard to know from a black-and-white photo. Although I did. Let me see if I can focus. I did colorize the photo, but I don't know if that changes the eye color. Plus, I'm rather colorblind, so. but that's rather interesting. I did not notice this. Maybe this is a whole book about a 17-year-old. A dark-haired and dark-eyed girl of 17 sat on a low stool with a heavy quarto, a Hebrew Bible on her knees. One hand supported her cheek, the other rested on the book. Her eyes were fixed on its strange eastern characters. Her long, drooping curls half-veiled the page. She was not and never could be pretty, yet her dark face had warmth and character. Her eyes, great beauty and her young form, much grace. Her name was Grace Lee. She was born far away amongst Welsh hills, but she was an orphan, and for two years she had lived with her guardian, an old priest, Dr. Cranky, and his cousin, Miss Amy Cranky, in one of the wildest nooks of Northern England. Dr. Cranky was a learned man. Miss Cranky was skilled in every art of the needle. Both zealously taught the young girl all they knew. And thus an accomplished scholar and an accomplished and as accomplished a needlewoman grew up Grace Lee in a bleak and lonely home. A gust of wind swept by the house. It died far away with a faint murmur on wild moors. The young girl bent her ear and listened. How far that wind has come, she thought. How far it must be going. How wide the world must be. 
She put her book away. She left the room. She went up to the highest part of the house, a terrace on the roof. The snow fell on her bare head. The keen north wind blew back her hair from her face, but her blood was ardent and young. Her cheek only freshened to feel the blast. She only shook her head and smiled at the falling snow. She looked around her. A wide white plain spread to the foot of white hills. A pale sky met a paler horizon. She clasped her hands on her bosom. She raised herself on tiptoe. She stretched her slender neck and bent a keen eagle look that seemed as if it would pierce every barrier. Ah, she thought again, how wide the world must be. And seized with a wanderer's longing, she thought of burning Africa, of the luxuriant new world of fair southern Europe, with the sun shining on her brown ruins and the blue Mediterranean washing her antique shores. I wish I were a queen, she thought, her head pensively inclined towards her right shoulder, but a queen without her state, without her kingdom, what place, beautiful or famous, would I not see? What delight should not be mine? I would do great things. I would build cathedrals. I would found hospitals. I would erect palaces. I would make a cardina of Dr. Cranky, a duchess of Miss Amy, a princess of Lily. I would have more jewels than a sultana, more robes than there are days in the year. And with all, I would be so generous and so good that everyone should love and praise Queen Grace. Grace, my dear, said the gentle voice of Miss Cranky from below. Will you come down and make the tea, if you please? The daydreamer awoke, and laughing at her own dream, she ran down lightly. She made the tea. The frugal meal was soon over. She returned to her Hebrew. Dr. Cranky to, to a seven years. Dr. Cranky to a seven years begun history of the church. Miss Amy to a Penelope piece of embroidery. Quiet was the evening by the bright fireside. Grace did not feel it dull. Study, too, has her charm, and charm more true than that of dreams, and almost as sweet. Well, there's a brief glance at Grace. Grace Lee, the book that Allie was reading in October of the year before her death. Let's see if I can find anything in the Ypsilanti commercial about that book, which would have brought it to her attention. All right, this is interesting. The ladies' library has found that the following books belonging to it are missing. Any person, any person having one is earnestly requested to leave it at the library room or with one of them, the members of the, the board, I think it says. Anyway, Grace Lee is part of that list. This is from May 16th, 1874. What's that? June, July, August, September, five months before Allie read it, so perhaps it was from the library. It makes sense. Well, at least there is a known copy at the the ladies' library, wherever that was in Ypsilanti. Let me see what else we can do. What's her name? Julia Cavanaugh. So obviously the books were... Accessible to her, Julia Cavanaugh. Let's see if we can find anything here. Julia Cavanaugh. Nothing. Grace Lee is mentioned, but no Julia Cavanaugh. All right, well. That's that. That's that.